When you're talking about mental traps, what exactly do you mean? Mental traps are habitual modes of thinking and acting that take up our time and deplete our energies without doing anything for us. They're absolute waste of time. And what the book is basically is a, uh, a system for classifying the varieties of ways of we have of wasting time. Uh, l let's go through some of them. First, I should say that they differ uh, in terms of uh, formal structure. Differentiates one, one mental trap from another isn't the, the, the content of what we do, but the way we do it. So for the simplest one is persistence. And in persistence, we continue to, to move toward a goal that has lost its value. Uh, the example that I give is uh, playing a Monopoly game, where you, as inevitably ha happens, you, you lose interest before the end. But you just have to keep going, because... Right, and you say, thing, you say peculiar things like, uh, w I just, I just want to get it over with, which is devoid of any significance as far as I can tell. But society uh, wants us. I mean, all it's like a, a task undone. They're all the, you know, practically everything that ever came out of uh, Ben Franklin's mouth. Yeah, in fact, I, I discussed Ben Franklin in the book. Forms of activity that uh, seem to me pretty clearly, both on the basis of introspection and on the basis of logic, to be wastes of time, are celebrated in Proverbs as, as the height of wisdom. And pers pers persistence is one of them. One way in which it's come up, uh, if it had come up a little bit sooner, I would have put it in the book is the current U.S. political debate between uh, the pro pro proponents of uh, stay, stay the course and cut and run. Stay the course and cut and run, right. Right. The very use of the language presupposes that, that stay the course is the morally superior point of view. If you look at it reasonably, there are circumstances where stay the, staying the course is, is the better thing to do, and there are circumstances where cutting and running is the better thing to do. But there's this presumption that all other things being equal, staying the course is the more moral choice or the, the more rational choice. But there's no foundation for that at all, of course. Give me another one. Anticipation. So since we're talking about Benjamin Franklin, he, uh, Franklin is a classic anticipator. Anticipation is uh, doing something too soon. We're, we're working toward the goal bef when, when, when it would be uh, advisable, more optimal to postpone working on it until sometime in the future. The best way I can describe it is with a somewhat contrived example before giving real examples. You, you've made some kind of a request and you're waiting for a reply. Either your request will be accepted or it will be rejected. You don't know which yet. If it's accepted, you plan to write a thank you note, and if it's rejected, you plan to write a complaint. Now, in the normal course of, of events, you, you would wait until you get the response, and then you, you, you know which response on your part you need to make. You could, however, do it right away. If you, wanted, if you wanted to cross it off your to-do list at all costs, you could take care of it today by writing two letters, uh, the thank you note in case it's an acceptance, and the, uh, the complaint in, ca in case it's a rejection. But it would, it would be more optimal to wait until you get the letter because that way you only have to write one letter. Now Benjamin Franklin says, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Well, you can do it today by, by doing twice as much work. Let's go to another one. Reversion. In reversion, the goal is already beyond reach. You've, you've played the game and you've lost. There's nothing more to be done about it. That's the, if you're at a cocktail party and someone says something and uh, in the middle of the night you get the witty comeback line? Is that yeah, yeah, that's a great example of reversion. <laughs> it's too late. Or uh, you're, you're dumped and you finally realize what it was that you should have done with the... Right, or you don't get an inheritance that you expected and you you prove with absolute precision that you should have gotten it. But yeah. it doesn't get you anything because it, the, the, the issue is over with. You ever thought of calculating the amount of time that human beings, I mean, I, I think mental way, <laughs> mental trap time is probably exceeds useful time. It, it's enormous, Espe especially uh, we can waste time in, in tiny little episodes that only take a few seconds. One example I use in the book is that you're in a restaurant and you're being ignored by the waiter. And you tell you, you decide that if he doesn't come to your table in five minutes, you're going to say, you're going to remonstrate with him. You're going to, you're going to say such and such. Now, to tell yourself that now is anticipation because there's, there's no advantage to telling yourself that now instead of waiting the five minutes and then I, uh, when it's time for action actually to act. 
it's only a waste of a few seconds of time. But if you, if you multiply that by hundreds of occasions throughout the day, it could be an, an exha exhaustive drain on your energy. The book is Mental Traps, A Field Guide to the Stupid Mistakes That Can Ruin Your Life. I've been speaking with the author, Andre Kukla, and Mental Traps, published by Doubleday Canada.